Thanks for joining me today. This is Danny and welcome back to my modded 1.10.2 series and to the future site of my botanical gardens. Today we are getting back into Batania. Finally, we started playing with Batania a few episodes ago and kind of got the basics. We've got our, our uh, mana pool up here and some endo flames and of course the petal apothecary and infinite water supply and our runic altar and living wood and we got the only thing we really did is we made a sojourner sash um, and besides of course getting all the basics down and we did it out here right out right in our front yard um, but I do plan on moving this today because we, <laughs> we're gonna need a lot more space than this and um, I don't want all that noise by my house because <laughs> Batania can be pretty freaking loud sometimes so I'm kind of clearing out some space here and doing a little bit of um, terraforming, leveling, leveling things out. And over time, now of course, we're not going to do all this today, but over time, I want to kind of turn this into like a botanical garden type of thing. We're not going to do all that today. I'm just, mostly I just want to get things cleared out enough so that we can, the first thing that I really want to work on is automating mana production. Because... Because I want mana. <laughs> and I don't want to have to do it manually. <laughs> that it. Hey, why is that not working for these? Huh. This is the Horn of the Wild. It destroys all the grass and flowers in the area. Well, it breaks them. But apparently. Oh, what's this? Beans. <laughs> apparently, it doesn't work with biomes of plenty grass. Crazy. Keep in mind when you make this guy, it requires a pasture seed, which you get by dropping grass that you pick up with the shears into a mana pool without a catalyst. If you have a catalyst in there, you're going to end up with. Um, I mean, if you have a cat, if you have the alchemy catalyst under your mana pool, you're going to end up with a s with a fern. Okay, so I'm going to make a new mana pool. What? <laughs> Vivid wave, that must be a new achievement. Because that is not my first mana pool. And I am going to put this mm, down here somewhere. How about there? And then oh, we need to get our botania materials now. Oh, wait a minute. Morphing tool, hooray! <laughs> our uh, wand of the forest is in our morphing tool. So we can switch this to, no, actually that's the way we wanted it. So that we can take our mana pool, or our mana tablet and empty it out in here, whoops. And then once it's empty, we're gonna fill it up again with our other mana pool. Because if you pick up a mana pool, you lose all the mana. So we don't want that. And then I'm going to pick these guys up while we're waiting for that. Meltdown. <laughs> okay, so that guy's empty now. So we can come over here and then set this guy to fill up the mana tablet. It already is. And it should be enough to empty this out. Hooray! Okay, now we have an extra mana pool that we'll probably be using soon. The endo flames will pick up charcoal or coal or whatever <laughs> within two blocks. So if we set them up in a configuration something like this, and then one in each corner, they actually can't. They can only go one block diagonally, two blocks in the north, south, east, west, and then we would drop charcoal right here. Um, and then we'll also be able to put two more here. So we'll be able to set up one, two, three, four here for one um, for one place to set charcoal. So if you've watched me do this in the past, I used um, Steve's factory manager to detect whether or not there's a piece of charcoal there. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be able to do that because there is no Steve's factory manager 
for 1.10.2, but we do have something else in 1.10.2. <laughs> we have pressure plates. However, it does have to be a wooden pressure plate. So if we put a piece of redstone there and we throw just some item on here, you can see it emits a redstone signal. Okay, so I want to try to do this in a way where we don't lose, because we can have, where we don't lose any of the flowers. I mean, other than obviously the spot in the middle, because I want to be able to f maximize the number of flowers that we can have here. So what I'm going to do, let's see, is kind of tunnel. I'm gonna kind of tunnel out of here, like maybe to here. Mm. How about here? There. And then run some redstone conduit. Well, first of all, we'll just put a block. I suppose it can be grass, it doesn't matter. We'll put our pressure plate on there. Then, we're gonna run some redstone conduit. that block so we're gonna have to hit it with the wrench to tell it that we want to grab the redstone signal from that <laughs> that piece of dirt and we want to carry it send a red signal to the flower okay so we're gonna carry it over here to a vanilla dropper facing this way no nope, that is facing down oops there we go facing toward an open crate from Batania. So the open crate, all it is, it's basically like a dropper, except that it drops directly down. It has no inventory, it has no um, GUI, I'm clicking on it, there's no GUI, but when you put something into it, um, oh, <laughs> I forgot something, it drops it down. It drops it directly down, as you can see, as that just happened. Um, the only problem is, uh, this is reversed. <laughs> so we need to we need to reverse the signal here um, because we want it to drop when there is no redstone signal. So I'm going to send the redstone signal into this dirt block. Since this is underground, I'm not worried that it's kind of ugly. Um, and that's basically making a not gate. So when this guy gets a redstone signal, it's going to turn off. So if we go like this, yay! Oh, wait, what? Oh, it landed in my inventory. Crap. Okay, so to get this guy started, we have to step on the pressure plate. Hmm. So now when I'm standing on this, that torch should be out, but it's not. Yeah, I got it. I just had to tell the cable down there to output a strong redstone signal. So now, you can see the torch is off. If I step off the pressure plate, yay! So <laughs> it's just going to keep a piece of charcoal there. So the only drawback to this r so right now is that if this mana tank gets, or this mana pool gets full, it's going to continue dropping um, charcoal. And then the charcoal will despawn after five minutes. Um, now we could probably afford to lose one piece of charcoal every five minutes, but it would be nice to kind of eliminate that somehow. Um, and we could do that by setting up a, a comparator on the on the uh, mana pool. 
But before we do that, let's get the charcoal out here. Okay, so if you remember a few episodes ago, we set up this storage module um, in the remote storage, for in our RF tools remote storage, to be always filled with charcoal. In fact, this is the setup right here. We've got an electric furnace pumping charcoal into our modular storage, and we're keeping two stacks of charcoal in there at all times. I'm just going to put that there. That looks a little goofy, though. I suppose I could... <laughs> Looks quite goofy. Ah, oh, whatever. Let's uh, we'll fix that later. I'll make it look pretty later. And now we need some item conduits. Oh boy. Oh, we only need two. Okay, we're good. So one to go in. No, I'm sorry. We're extracting. No, nope. right, we're staying on the green channel. It doesn't matter. Always active. And then we're inserting into here. Whoa, oh no. Okay, so I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that we were using cobblestone as a filler in there so that we didn't end up with 100 stacks of charcoal. Or we didn't end up storing 100 stacks of charcoal because that would be because that would be kind of a waste. So I'm going to have to put a filter in here and we're going to filter and <laughs> now we have a whole bunch of stacks of charcoal. going to filter that we only want charcoal in here and we can extract it's just yeah there we go so now we're only pulling in charcoal so now to get things started I just need to step on that again and there we have it Hooray! so now our mana pool will always be full of mana <laughs> well I mean and when it's not it'll be producing mana Okay, so if we set a comparator, a redstone comparator, next to our mana pool, um, it's going to emit a redstone signal equivalent to how full the pool is. So right now, it's power 3, so it's 3 fifteenths full. So we can use that signal and a logic gate to make this thing stop when this thing is full. Put the comparator there. I'm going to have some insulated redstone conduit there. And let's see. And then here, now we don't need that torch anymore. Because we're going to be using a logic gate. And I'm going to set the logic gate down. Actually, can we put this? Yes, okay, cool. Uh, which way is it facing? Okay, it's facing the way I want it to be facing. So I've got a block of redstone up here that's simulating a full mana pool. And that is sending a redstone signal down here. Um, we lose one, so we're down to 14. We lose one whenever we enter the pipes. And then we're zigzagging around here till we get a redstone strength of two. Which means that, we again, we lose one, so that's one into the pipe. So if the mana pool is not quite full and we're only getting a signal strength of 14, this will not reach and we won't be getting a redstone signal here. So now we should be able to say, if all these redstone signals are off, then we will emit a redstone signal to our dropper. And yeah, so now if I break this block, We should see some charcoal happening over there. <laughs> Yay, okay. And then if we put our comparator back. This should run until our mana tank is full, or our mana pool is full, and then it'll stop. Hooray! That's awesome. So that so we won't lose any charcoal. Well, Except for maybe the last piece that got dropped. That we might end up losing, but that's okay. I don't care about that. And then it'll just start dropping charcoal again if we use some of our mana in our mana pool. Um, so now all I want to do is max this out, get the rest of these flowers in here. So we need one, two, we can we can have as many as, ah, ah. <laughs> 
I don't want these. Oh, crap. Okay. This is so noisy over here. Here, we can take care of some of the noise. Boop. <laughs> that takes care of that. Um, so, I learned a little tip from Booty Toast. He left a comment. Um, if you get a tall flower, well, actually, it doesn't have to be a tall flower necessarily. And of course, we're going to need our shears. Get our petals. Plant the petals. <laughs> you can plant them all, whatever. And grab our bone meal. And we get another tall flower. So we basically have an infinite number of flowers, as long as we have bone meal. So that is pretty cool because that means that when you're starting off with Botania, all you really have to do is run around the world and gather one of each colored flower. Once you have one of each colored flower, you never need to go out gathering flowers again because you can always make more from the petals. I ran into another recipe that I couldn't do because I had the alchemy catalyst and that is the mana powder which we need for pretty much all of our flowers. Um, so if we try to throw a redstone in here while we have the alchemy catalyst we get glowstone. <laughs> and the same is true for most of the other powders as well. Like gunpowder gives us flint, glowstone gives us something else. I don't remember what. Let's see. We can find out. Glowstone gives us redstone so we can go back and forth. But that doesn't help us, of course. So we get rid of the alchemy catalyst and then we can make mana powder. Okay, two brown. A red and a light gray. Don't forget that it's light gray. <laughs> I've done that many, many times. And then we need seeds. And we need to have a bucket ready and an empty hand. In fact, we don't need these in our hand anymore. All right, I got four more endo flames, so we should see those dropping more often, at, at least for the time being, until they start to get caught up. And we should see a lot more mana bursts and more mana coming in. Hooray! Let's make sure our spreader is keep. Oh no, our mana, mana spreader is not keeping up. Crap. I guess we'll just put it right next to that one to the same mana pool and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about half of these guys because they're all pointed at this one so we'll keep one two three four five six of them pointed over there and then we'll do the other six pointing at that one or linked to that one so I'm shift shift right clicking first on here then on here Hover over these, we should see they are connected to that one. All right, so now this guy should start catching up. Yep, it's caught up. Hooray! Get another piece of wool. And shut this guy up. <laughs> Hooray! Our mana production is now fully automated and it is scalable. We can add more. Um, all we would really have to do is just set up another uh, dropper and open crate and then we could just pipe the redstone and the items over to the next um, place and we probably put it right about where I'm standing right here just a couple blocks over or a couple blocks this way wait <laughs> right about here I think would be good unless we move the wall back and we could actually put it right about here yeah <laughs> so this is scalable. Our mana pool is almost full. I think it's about three quarters of the way. And unfortunately, I'm out of time. I, I do apologize that this video might be a little shorter than usual, um, but I'm kind of out of time. And I also, if you happen to notice um, a little gap in my videos lately, my son and I are actually both in skate camp this week. So we're uh, spending three hours every morning skateboarding. <laughs> 
So we're having a lot of fun, but it's definitely been taking its toll on my schedule because it's, I mean, not only is three hours a lot of time, but it's also pretty exhausting. In the next episode, we're going to continue progressing with um, Botania. The next time we play Botania, we are going to make contact with the elves and be able to do and basically get to that next tier of Botania. And I'm probably going to work toward getting the Ring of Far Reach and and maybe expanding on this a little bit or whatever but most, mostly we'll be focusing on contacting the elves doing the portal to Elfheim and getting all the different things that we can get from there and in the next episode i you know i'm not really sure what we're going to do in the next episode but we're going to be doing something probably on the tech side in the next episode i'm going to be going back and forth both with botania we'll be doing botania every other episode and then something else every other episode we might be getting into forestry that's, when, that's something I've been thinking about doing for a while, and I've never played with forestry, so it would be something new and fun for me. Um, but we'll see. I might actually wait till we go to the end, because one of the things I want to do with forestry is build an enderpearl farm, but um, I need endstone to do that. I mean, not an enderpearl farm, but an enderlily farm, but I need endstone to do that. But in the next episode, we'll probably be over here in the little town maybe expanding adding another building or something actually what we're going to be working toward is this crystal bow and once we have it i'm going to wait crystal bow once we have this i'm going to crank it up with um see dragonstone that's something we're going to need from the elves <laughs> elven trade yeah and then the mana infused string is just string in the mana pool so yeah, so we'll do that in the next episode. In the, so the next time we play with Botania, we're going to get our crystal bow. And the episode after that, we're going to go to the end. Hooray! And then we'll, and then maybe we'll get our enderpearl farm set up after that. So I hope you join me for all that. <laughs> and if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button. Um, it does really help my channel out, and it lets me know what kind of contents you like. So I hope you join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.